To build software, you must be awake and cognizant. And you must also have energy. To be amazing. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness. Jesse Warden. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. Today, I wanted to share with you a project I'm working on. It's a work in progress for an Indu in dashboard. Go to GitHub, you can see it's currently for Cucumber Protractor, but it could work with anything with Selenium. So React, Backbone, doesn't really matter. I've just chosen to do Angular for now. And you can identify which features in your software are passing and which ones are not. Normally, end-to-end -end testing is done last in enterprise. We have the compiler, a lot of work done, very minimal investment done in milliseconds. Good low hanging fruit, lots of value, very little effort. Then you have unit testing, which is a little bit longer. Then you have integration testing using mocks, a little bit longer than that. And then end in testing, a lot of work tends to run a little bit longer. So tend to put at both the end of the testing scenario and a series of quality gates and least amount of effort from most of the teams I've seen with. I disagree with that. I think that there's two problems with it. Number one, it has a PR problem. There's no easy way to visualize end in testing working. You have these really strange Selenium things that Lassian's the only one I found who's made a reasonable attempt to show your features of your software working or not in some form of dashboard, aside of your code coverage and code quality metrics and code complexity metrics, right? So that's number one. Number two is that things have changed. Nowadays with modern DevOps and the ability to do syntax sugar like Angular's Protractor on top of Selenium, it's easier to actually test and see if your software is working. Plus, all of testing is kind of an attitude change. I would say gone are the days of waterfall where you disappear for six months to develop, but they're still around. But nowadays, doing all of testing, uh, where you take all the software, all the parts, the front end, the back end, the middle tier, the database, and make them all wired together as soon as possible, called all of testing. Now, this is nothing new. This has been around since the late 1960s when George Mueller over at NASA, the visionary guy for the Apollo program, he had these German rocket scientists saying, hey, we need to build these parts, we need to unit test these parts, and we need to connect them together if they work. And after about 11 or so launches, a couple million dollars later, we'll have a rocket in space carrying men to the moon. And George is like, heck no, let's test a real rocket right here, right now, Fat Boy Slim style. Thus, they did it in the third launch, got men to the moon and won the space race. This kind of idea of getting everything together quickly causes a lot of stress. It has a DBA sitting next to someone like me with a designer and a BA, and we're all trying to get this stuff to work like in a week, you know, with modern DevOps. It's crazy, but it's good because it shows the software working, surfaces a lot of integration problems sooner rather than, well, I built my front end, I'm done. It's up to you to integrate and you to QA and test it. Those days are over. I'm hoping that this dashboard will help that kind of stuff. We want to know two things. Does it work, my software, what features, and does it work now on a new release? And does it work in this particular environment? Currently, we have a lot of dashboards for that for Sonar Cube and Istanbul unit test coverage, but we don't have anything for end-to-end -end testing. So I'd like that to change. My work in progress dashboard is shows your features and a feature report, all your features being user stories that you've identified with your team in a cucumber fashion, and the actual scenarios and which steps work and which ones do not. There's no stress testing, no timing, no anything like that right now. It's just simply what features work, which don't, what percentage of those actual scenarios pass, of the steps and if the steps fail, which ones fail. Work in progress, but I've created two things for you. The first is a demo application. So if you go into the demo folder, you'll see the demo application. It's a simple Angular application that allows you to click on a few screens and see some things and do a fake login and a fake bad login. You can test these features and actually see a real application working. The source is the actual dashboard. Now it's Angular built on top of Material Design Lite, not Angular Material. Okay, I just wanted to keep it nice and light. Two simple servers for you that are static express servers that you can you know throw away, but they're there for illustrative purposes. The more core of the guts is the source that actually reads a Cucumber JSON file and illustrates that report in these either features and scenarios with the steps within them. So to launch the demo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go node server demo. And this will launch a basic static web server locally so you can play with the demo application. So we're gonna go to localhost 3001 and it'll show you a login screen. We're gonna make this mobilized. There we go. So now we have an iPhone 6. It's a basic web application running there. We're gonna log in with the username test and the user password is test, login. And we have a basic application that shows our workouts for today. We can click on a workout, see the sets that we have and add the reps that we have with basic form validation, add the weight. And we only wanna do two sets. We're gonna kill the third set. Just kidding, add a third. You always do a third set. Basically just 
log in your workouts, which ones you're doing for how many reps and how many weights. Adding things, removing things, we're showing data, we're doing CRUD, going through the steps of login. Now, when you're developing software, it's all based on the user stories. In Cucumber or Gherkin's case, it is identifying that user story with the scenarios that facilitate that story working as well as the negative scenarios from a QA perspective of verifying that you've handled situations that don't work. Example, let's show you the feature files. If you're not familiar with Cucumber, a quick crash course, Cucumber is a language that you agree to speak in an agile fashion. So BA or the business, developers, QA, and design can all agree on the same language. So when they look at a user story, they know what it means, they know what it's trying to accomplish, they understand the persona, they have empathy with that person of what problems they're trying to solve, and they understand they accomplish this feature, they know if it's successful or not, if it's actually working. That language, that Cucumber language they agree to speak can then be changed into tests. These testable features are what we're trying to identify. So not just unit testing pieces of the code, but actually testing the features. Do the feature work or not, right? That's all we really care about. It's all really users care about. There's a lot of work getting up to that point, but at the end of the day, that report is what we really can assess very quickly. Does our application work or not? And if not, what features are failing? Cucumber, in our case, from a JavaScript perspective, looks just like this. It's a feature file and a features folder. If you go to a demo, you'll see it. We only have two for now. We have login, which allows you to, as a user, I want to log in so that I can see my workouts for today. Record reps and weight allows you to go to those particular exercises and record your reps and weight for that particular one and hit complete. Basic functionality, two user stories are trying to detect. Only the login for now has a negative test case scenario. If you use bad credentials, it should not work. Those of you who are like, well, where do I put this kind of stuff? Do I actually put login credentials and feature files? No. Eric Elliott has a wonderful article describing where do you put these secure things from a perspective. I'll put that in the description. For now, we're just using this to test to verify we have all of testing. We have a real device that when you press it and it actually goes, we can test it, right? That's what we really want. Real code hitting a real server with a real database and all the jazz of rollbacks and all that other goodness. Real app, we're real testing. So does the feature work or not? Each one of these scenarios is run. Now they are turned into testable code. So login steps for now has each one of these steps is a corresponding match into this feature. If this step passes, you're good. I can go to the login page. It has a deep link, right? In this case, it's root. I can go to the workout page. I can actually set the password and click the login. These kind of things, each one of these has to pass. How do we test this? Well, we can manual test it like back we used to do in the olden days and still do today. We can use test and test login, right? Verifies login works. We can clear our session and then go back and use bad credentials such as cow and cow. And you should have a negative scenario where I can't log in because I use bad credentials. So we know that that's bad. We've coded for it. We have designed for it. So we've handled both of those scenarios. Well done team. Cool. That's manual opening a page at some server and clicking around. Let's automate that. So we're going to open a new tab here and we're going to go gulp end to end. It's just a build script that runs angular protractor, also known as syntax sugar on top of selenium. If you're not familiar with selenium, selenium is a way for you to automate browsers, opening and closing, talking to them, making the go pages, clicking on things on the page, setting data in them. When you wrap that with code, you can automate your testing cycle. It's pretty, 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 pretty. Pretty, pretty cool. All Angular Protractor does is understand Angular's lifecycle and allow you to very easily parse the DOM that Angular renders out. Make it simple. We're gonna run gulp end to end to actually run each one of those features and run the scenarios within them. So it's gonna open a page, it's gonna do the login, it's gonna go to the login, go to the page, and then it's gonna do the bad login and then record the results. Now here's the problem I have with this. For the most part, it's not so bad, right? It actually runs the feature. You can see that, you can see the scenario and you can see which one's failed with a stack trace. So far, so good from a developer's perspective. And it has a report of which ones worked and which ones didn't. But this is not as sophisticated as what they have now with Sonar Cube and Istanbul's code coverage, right? This is a very, very important report that doesn't really have anything you can see. Atlassian is one of the only ones I've found online that looks really good to actually show what features work and don't and actually allow you to drill down to find out where it failed and why. As a QA person or as a business person or a DevOps looking at your very software, which ones work and which ones don't, which ones have regressions, you should be able to see that immediately rather than reading a console log. It's, you know, 2016, we have these things called web pages and reports. So that's what this is. The second server I provided for you we're gonna launch that up. It's called the dashboard. So you go node server, you go what the name of it is, uh, report, right. So this report will run on 3000 and it'll show you the latest Cucumber report that's generated. So you can see which features it actually tested 
and you can see the percentage of scenarios that actually pass within that feature, how many scenarios were in there and how many steps were actually tested. For now, I only have two. If I wanna click on to see the bad one of what actually went wrong, it shows me the two scenarios, right? Test login works, cal login fails, like we'd expect, right? This is a negative test case scenario. However, this, I can't see my workout and that is because whoops is not the password. If you wanna know where is this application reading from? Well, I didn't know this. I found out from Protractor's source code that if you have this format tag in your Cucumber options, assuming you're using the, the Protractor Cucumber framework, which is now a separate thing from Protractor, completely separate GitHub project, there's this Cucumber options. If you provide format and go JSON colon, then you can actually identify a exported JSON file. And it's actually readable. It'll tell you all the information you need to show what feature passed, which one didn't, what scenario passed, which didn't, and what items, and how long each took. Pretty, 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 pretty cool. All I did was build an Angular and Material Design Lite wrapper that reads that JSON file and shows it to you on the screen. So our feature fail doesn't work, so let's go fix that. So we're gonna go to Login Steps, change the actual feature, since these are parameterized tests. Whatever strings I put in these steps will actually be passed into the step as parameters so we can re-modify the feature to be test and test as the password. We can rerun our gulp end in test. It'll reopen the browser, run the scenario, close the browser and go through each single one of those. And in this case, you can see all now pass, regenerated the report, which is the JSON file. And if you look in the source code, you can see it. It's actually in here in the source code. You can report JSON. Now, if you reload the page, Voila, you can see you have a passing one because we changed it to test. That's how you can basically get it to work from a work perspective. My envision is this is right next to your code coverage report in Jenkins so they can see the code complexity from like Halstead and all that other stuff. They can see the code quality from ESLint and all the other ones that pass and you choose to allow to fail. They can see the unit test coverage. And if you differentiate between unit test and integration test, it's fine. And finally, end to end test, which ones work or not. It's just a supplement to, if you already have Sonar Cube, this lives right next to it to identify what end to end test actually pass on what environment. From the code base perspective, again, the demo folder has just a demo application for Angular. This would be your source code, but for now it's just a demo application. SRC folder has all the stuff you need. Now, if you ever used Mocha or Jasmine to do Istanbul code coverage, it puts a coverage folder at the root of your directory. In the future, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with a folder called feature report. And in there is where you will configure protractor to output that JSON file. All the application does, this Angular application inside a feature report, starts in the index HTML, is read that JSON file and display it. Currently, you have to do this manually. So if you'd like to play with it, I know some of you somehow found this on NPM already and are somehow <laughs> trying to get this to work. And eventually what I'd like to do is when you NPM install it, it will do the exact same thing that Istanbul does and generate those files for you in the root of your project. I'm not quite there yet. So if you want to play with it manually, it's all yours. I'd love to see what you come up with and ideas and whatnot, bang on it from bugs. Hope this was helpful. Hope you understand how valuable end-to-end testing is. You can see that it just has an illustration problem. It's very impactful for QA teams and business to see which features are working, which ones aren't, and if they are fail, where, from both a now and regression perspective. Again, my name is Jesse Warren. I hope that was helpful. Hope you liked that. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you've got any other questions, hit me up in comments. Thank you very much for your time.